The road trip for the Phillies rolls on here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's game number two of this three-game series. The Phillies are hoping to erase the thoughts of last night's loss to the Diamondbacks. They pounded out one hit after another, and they look to take game number two here at Chase Fields. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Ben Davis. We survived the sandstorm today here in Phoenix, Arizona. And now we're at the ballpark where the roof is closed, hot outside, comfortable inside. And the Phillies are hoping to make the Diamondbacks offense uncomfortable. They pounded one ball after another last night, and they were led by the guy at the top of the order, A.J. Pollock. Every good lineup needs a catalyst, someone at the top that they can count on to get on base. That is A.J. Pollock. Get on base for the guys in the middle of the lineup, and they know what to do once they have the guys on base. A.J. Pollock uses the whole field. He can run. He can play a great outfield, and he's got some pop. He's got sneaky pop. He's a good place to hit, and he is their catalyst. One of the things that stood out last night was his ability to show power to all fields and also his ability to sort of set the tone over the last several weeks for the Arizona Diamondbacks. 308 batting average is among the league leaders. On base percentage, 363. But when you talked about the power, 474 slugging percentage. Yeah, and he's a guy that's very, very sneaky. Like I said, I think this lineup doesn't get a whole lot of publicity because of the fact they play here in Arizona. It's not a big market. Uh, they're in the desert, and it's just West Coast. They just don't get a lot of publicity, but this ball club can hit. Six and a half games out in the National League West. All right, well, the Phillies have found a couple of rookies that can definitively hit. Odubel Herrera and Michael Franco. In fact, Franco last night put on a display after going 0 for 12 in the series against San Diego. Last night, a couple extra base hits. This ball was hooked. I, yeah, I don't think he really knew how far he hit it when it came off the back, but he kind of looked at it like, is it going to go or not? 445 feet later, it lands, scaring a little girl out there in center field. But <laughs> it was good to see in the fact that he stayed in the middle of the field, and we'll see that, talk about that a little bit more as the game begins. 22 doubles for Michael Franco that ties him for the rookie lead with Odubel Herrera. Now, Odubel last night was able to stretch his hitting streak to 13 consecutive games. He has become the Phillies' number three hitter, and that's saying an awful lot. It does say a whole lot for a guy that's never been above double A. And to put these numbers up, he feels very comfortable. He's getting more comfortable in center field. But the numbers speak for themselves. During a 13-game history, 368 average. That's doing it. That's getting on base. And he's also doing it with runners in scoring position. He's getting to some two-strike counts, but he's finding ways to get guys in and get more knocks. Well, you take a look at the Phillies' roster right now. There's a lot of guys who are 25 and younger who are hitting 270 and above. Above, and they're starting to put together some pretty good power numbers as well. Tonight is game two of this three-game series. It'll be David Buchanan. Boy, he really needs a bounce-back game from his last one. And he'll be opposed by Jeremy Hellickson. All the times the Phillies saw Hellickson in spring training, they have never seen him in a regular season ball game. Well, we're going to step aside in just a moment. Maybe Ben will visit the pool, take a dip. And when we come back, we'll go to the Comcast Sportsnet Studios before first pitch. Phillies baseball is brought.
Robinson is out on the mound warming up as we speak the former Tampa Bay Ray. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Utley starts at second base, then Odubel Herrera and Michael Franco. Ryan Howard's the cleanup hitter. He's over at first. Jeff Francoeur starts in right field. Darren Ruff in left field. In the bottom third of Galvis, Cameron Ruff, and David Buchanan. And they will face the 26-year-old Jeremy Hellickson. I shouldn't say 28-year-old. 7 and 8 with an ERA of 5.06. 124 hits and 115 and two thirds. Phillies have seen him plenty of times in spring training when he was with the Rays, but they've never faced him during a regular season game. It's hard to believe that they have not faced him in the regular season. It's hard to believe. As we take a look at the scouting report of Jeremy Hellickson, 89 to 91, very good changeup. He will throw it, but he's been roughed up his last couple starts, so hopefully the Phillies can keep that going. Make him 0 3 in his last three. Required during this offseason by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Let's take a look at our Nissan Keys to tonight's ball game. Keys to the game. Pitch in. They need to make some hitters move their feet, get them conscious of the pitch in. And middle of the field, Mike Kelly's better when he stays in the middle. And if I didn't say it before, pitch in. <laughs> Phillies did not do that in last night's game, at least consistently. Everything was out over the plate, and man, oh man, did the Diamondbacks make them pay. So here we go. Chase Utley playing second base again tonight. Played first base in last night's ball game. He was one for four with a run scored in an RBI. And the first pitch of the night. That's in there. So we're underway. It's 0 and 1. You see 88 miles an hour for Hellickson as Ben went over the scouting report. He's not going to be much more than that. He'll probably top off in the low 90s. Utley is 5 for 13 on this road trip. Inside one ball one strike. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Michael Kenderdine of Southampton. Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game. Then Michael will win one hundred dollars. Good luck Michael. Phillies with eighty one home runs this year. Inside and low two balls one strike. Ellickson acquired from the Tampa Bay Rays for two prospects back in November. Chopper to first, backed up on by Goldschmidt, and they'll throw out the out one away. Boy, that's a shame. Really, really good pitch for Chase to hit there. Just rolls it over. I mean, this pitch is middle, middle. He just gets out in front and rolls it over to first base. Watch where the location of this pitch is. Mm. It's a good one for a lefty to hit. Well, now Adubel Herrera, who has been batting third for the Phils recently, but back to the two hole with Michael Franco batting third. Overall hitting 290 with six home runs, 32 runs batted in. He's hit in 13 consecutive games. Kind of an interesting approach with that first pitch. I don't like it. That's not what you're going to do normally. Why do it just to see a release point? Do everything the same. If you're going to take it, that's fine. Take it. I yeah, wonder if it makes it easier for the pitcher. Down low. One ball, one strike. Last 32 games for O'Double. He's hitting 381. Now that's why his average is sitting at 290. He's also zeroing in on 100 hits. He has 96 hits for the season. And he fouls it back to the screen, one and two. I think Odubel saw that one really well. Got a little big, which is fine. See how he approaches it here. If he shortens up a little bit with the count one and two. Hellickson, as uh, Ben mentioned, does have a good curveball. Fastball, curveball, changeup, that's pretty much it. He does have a cutter in his repertoire. That one is hit over to shortstop. Owings is up with it. And there are two outs. Right off the hands. Two away. Michael Franco's coming up, and this was a long home run last night. Long and loud. 
If he can tell himself to do that, he can go out of any park to center field, right center field. 445 feet. 36 extra base hits now for Michael Franco, which is the most for a rookie since Carlos Ruiz at 38, his rookie season. Michael, good numbers across the board 22 doubles, 13 home runs, 48 runs batted in, and he takes inside and low. Ball at the knees, one ball, one strike. Good pitch there by Ellickson at 91. Tough one to hit, down and away. That one gets uh, Michael Franco on the arm. Hopefully, it doesn't hit him in the hand. It just kept on coming in. Phillies have a base runner and hopefully they haven't lost their third baseman but he is in a lot of pain laying on the ground behind home plate Sean Ficasny out to check him out. Well that would be devastating. He's reaching at his wrist anywhere in the wrist or hand region that is not good for a hitter. So he's got a little bit of a padding there but it's not much. Freddie Galvis, Cesar Hernandez showing a little bit of concern. It's the worst when the trainer comes out, he says, Where's it hurt? And you tell him, and then he automatically squeezes it or <laughs> does something. So he was trying to see the strength in the hand when he was asking him to squeeze his fingers. Take a look and see where it hits him. And we could hear that from up here. It was a splat. Oof. Take a listen. Oh, really, was no way for him to get out of the way. I think Pete McCannon's going to make a change. I think uh, they're going to take him out of the ball game. He's heading down toward the dugout. And Michael is up on his feet. Let's hope uh, it's just a precaution to take him out of the ball game. So let's see who Pete puts in. Andres Blanco's got a helmet. He's heading over to first base. So Whitey will take over at third. And we'll try to get you an update as soon as we have Thank one on Michael. Base. They have x ray machines Blanco. here at Chase Field, and they have that in every ballpark. Watch it from the right field camera. At the plate, first baseman Ryan Howard. It was late getting his foot down in that setup a little bit. I don't think he saw this all that well, obviously by his reaction. But again, that's that's an area you just you need your wrist, you need your hands to hit. Well, Ryan Howard's the battery did not play in last night's ball game, and he takes outside and low one zero. Howard overall 19 home runs 64 runs batted in. Down the way two balls and no strikes. Howard one home run away from 20 for the season for the ninth time in his career. And this is as drastic an overshift as you will see. Aaron Hill is way out there in right field. Well, it fouls it away, and it's two and one. Depending if the ball were to get hit to Aaron Hill out in right, shallow right field, it's going to end up being about 100, I'd say between 100 and 120 foot throw to first base. Now, second basemen aren't used to making that throw. But it is something that they will practice, knowing if they're going to put a drastic overshift on somebody. Yeah, he just moved over a few more steps. He moved in a step or two, but he moved over too. That one is lined toward right center field. Tomas is going to try to cut it off, and he knocks it down. But Blanco's on his way to third. They may wave him home. Yup, Miserock's going to wave him home. Hill doesn't realize it, and Blanco will score. It's one nothing Phillies. 
Man, was that a chance. And the Phils strike first here in the top of the first. Welcome to the ball game, Whitey. <laughs> you have the, the night off. That's why you go with two. Tomas coming up, not coming up with his ball. And Hill just, I guess no one was talking. Yeah, he just assumed that Blanco would stop at third. And Tomas, to his credit, he got after, after that ball quickly. But you got to be talking out on the field defensively. Four, 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 four. Get it home. Well, what a break it was for the Phils. It's a single and an E9, so no RBI for Howard. But the Phils lead at one nothing. And Jeff Francoeur takes low. One ball, no strikes. How about Miserock taking a chance? I was like just going to say, give Rock some credit. Hey, first <laughs> inning, why not? That way, Rock. So we're going to miss with a breaking ball. First one of the night for Hellickson. One ball, one strike. Good numbers for Frank Core. Frank Core playing right field tonight. That's where Dominic Brown was supposed to play, but Dominic came into the office today, said he was sick, so they took him out of the lineup. That one's hit over toward the hole, and it's grabbed by Jake Lamb. They go the short way, and the side is retired. 5 4 on the putout. The Phillies do score a run, but there's even more concern because their best young hitter, Michael Franco, gets hit by a pitch and is taken out of the ball game for X rays. We'll be back at the bottom of the first. Entertainment provider of the Phillies. AJ Pollock leads it off in center, then Jake Lamb and Paul Goldschmidt. David Peralta bats clean up. Yasmani Tomas fifth. Jared Saltalamaki is sixth. And the bottom third of Hill. Owings playing shortstop tonight at Hellickson. And they'll face Phillies right header David Buchanan, the 26 year old from Peachtree City, Georgia. Now the first pitch to AJ Pollock. A high in the air foul down the left field line. And out of play. Well, that's not a good sign. Numbers for David. Tenth start, two and six, an ERA of 7.23. Really got roughed up in his last outing. He allowed seven earned runs in four innings. So take a look at the scouting report of David Buchanan. Average velocity 89.2. He's a four-pitch pitcher, but he needs to throw that change up, even the breaking ball. But like I said, in the keys, he's got to pitch in. He's averaging just under 17 pitches per inning, which is uh, almost two more than last year's rookie season. That one is lined right back through the middle of base hit. 
leadoff single. Good looking player, AJ Pollock. He hits the ball, the ball very crisply. Well, that hit is the 129th hit for AJ Pollock this season, and it might be shocking for people to to realize this. I know I was kind of surprised. It's the most among outfielders in the National League. Hmm. Got to keep an eye on him too. He's stolen 26 bases and a strike to Jake Lamb. Jake Lamb four for 13 on this homestand for the Diamondbacks. I know it's easier said than done, but you have to get through the first five in this lineup. Doug Eddings behind the plate tonight. Crew Chief Bill Miller over at third. Jim Wolf is at first. Adrian Gonzalez at second. Outside, one ball, one strike. Well, the top four hitters or five hitters in this lineup last night uh, combined for 11 hits. And eight RBIs. Did a lot of damage. Pete McCannon spent some time today talking about that offense and just how they have to figure out how to get them off balance so they don't square everything up. That one's fouled away. It's one and two. He talked about you know, pitching inside. He talked about what Ricky Bo talked about during the uh, pregame show, getting the ball down. Aaron Harang was kind of pitching away from uh, contact last night, but they made a lot of contact against him. They did. And his off-speed just wasn't sharp. Fastballs are left up in the middle of the plate. There it goes. Pitch is taken outside. Throw to second, not in time. Stolen base number 27 for Pollock. So he's in scoring position. Really no chance for Cameron Rupp on that one. No chance. It was a tough pitch to throw on. So two and two. You see Pollock there. Well into your screen as he kind of still has the ball. Swing and a miss. He got him. There's the change up that Ben was talking about, not only against righties, but more importantly against left handers. And the first out is recorded here in the bottom of the first. During the 2015 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball. And softball programs. Paul Goldschmidt, the batter. In the air to right field. Jeff Francoeur going back. He has room, makes the catch. Pollock will tag, go to third. The way the ball was flying out last night, it's hard to tell when a ball leaves the bat and you see the outfielders going back how far it's going to carry. And yeah, we're down on the field. I remember playing here, and it was it was fun because the ball did jump. But just watching these guys take BP, it's just normal fly balls are just getting out of here. It'll bring David Peralta to the plate. Peralta eight for ten in the last two games. You don't think somebody can make themselves into a good hitter? David Peralta made himself into a good hitter. Takes off the inside quarter one and zero. Oh. How much does that benefit Paul Goldschmidt? It's huge. Huh. Well, he's been in the cleanup spot for 51 games now. He's hitting over 330 as the cleanup hitter. Outside two and zero. Oh. Good sign there though in that changeup is he's being aggressive with it. He did strike out Lamb with that changeup, but it's same arm action, same. Arm movement. 
That one's back toward the middle. Galvis behind the bag has it, and the side is retired. So Buchanan gets through the bottom of the first. No runs. One hit, one man left over at third. We'll go to the second. It's one nothing. Phil's on top. Bank Park, then they'll return the favor and go up to New York at the end of August, beginning of September. Tickets can be purchased for that four game set by going to Phillies.com. Top of the second inning here at Chase Field. Phillies lead it 1 0. And Darren Ruff will lead it off. Ruff, 3 for 10 on this road trip, hitting 247 with four home runs and 15 RBIs. Takes a strike 0 and 1. You see Darren have a big night. By big I mean home run big. He's got a chance to play here against a right hander now his numbers against lefties. Uh, have been good he hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities against right handers as a starter. Playing tonight because of the uh, illness. That Dominic Brown is facing. That one's hit well out towards center field on the run is Pollock out toward the track. It is off the top of the wall. Darren Ruff goes to second and he'll stop there. How did that ball not get out of the yard? No. no. Darren Ruff with his ninth double of the year. And the Phillies have the leadoff batter in scoring position. Inside outs this pitch here to right center. You can see that wasn't barreled totally. I don't know if he saves a homer or that would have gone off the top of the fence. I think it would have gone off the top of the fence. I do too. Well, pretty much for everybody else on the squad that probably would have been a triple but. <laughs> we're there not blessed with. Uh, or last night it probably would have been scored a triple. Even if he stayed on second. Yeah here's Freddie Galvis. Galvis takes outside it's one and oh Freddie was 0 for 4 in last night's ball game. What a transformation for Freddie. You know, we we all got caught up in his start. First 37 games of the season, he hit 355. It was an incredible run. Taking over for Jimmy Rollins at shortstop. Next 35 games, he hit 165. And then everybody was kind of concerned because he wasn't the same hitter. He was trying to get too big, trying to hit home runs. Well, the last 34 games, he's hitting 302. So, in these three different pieces to the season, he's adapted. He bunts that one toward first. It's going to get the runner over to third. And he's tagged out. That was a long high bunt right there by Freddie Galvis. It was, and I'm thinking if that ball's a few feet to Goldschmidt's right, that's a hit. 
Great idea. That is something we were watching infield today. Outfields were actually throwing home in infield practice. Infield outfield. Something you don't see anymore. The drag bunt from a lefty taking out to second base is something you just don't see anymore. But if you see it, he can get out into that region there. That's going to be a hit all day long. Cameron Ruffachev swing, bouncer back to the mound. Ruff is caught off third, going on contact. And he is tagged out. Up to second base goes Cameron Ruff. Well, there are two outs. So 1 5 2 on the fielder's choice. And David Buchanan is the batter. Nobody feels worse than Cameron Rupp here. Had a good opportunity with the man on third base. One out. I just feel like breaking something. Well, David Buchanan, who is two for 13 on the year, will be the batter with a runner in scoring position. Center fielder and right fielder are in compared to the left fielder David Peralta. It's the only downfall of Freddie Bunning uh, on that particular play. You know, you're getting toward the bottom of the order, and that's an out as it turns out. Oh and two. Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Rockies and the Mets are going at it again at City Field. Mets lead it, or Mets have won it four nothing. Matt Harvey, four strikeouts tonight, picks up the victory. 0-2 pitch to Buchanan, swing and a miss. Salta Lamaki has throw to first in time, so the strikeout is complete. And the Phillies are retired here in the second. No runs, one hit. And one man left in scoring position. Bottom of the second fills up one nothing. Lamakia and Aaron Hill are due up for the Diamondbacks. And for more on Yasmani Tomas, let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph? All right, thank you very much, Tom. Well, yes, before he ever played a game, Yasmani Tomas was the talk of Major League Baseball during this offseason. Where would he land? Of course, the 24-year-old from Cuba was, was a highly sought-after name uh, coming in as a free agent, the international free agent. And he ends up here in Arizona. Certainly, Phillies fans remember that uh, the Phillies were talking about getting him as well. And you look, and if you talk to some of the folks in the Arizona uh, organization, they'll tell you that he's been good for them. 
time. He's been, you know, solid. 89 games, batting just about 300. In fact, uh, for the most of the season, he's been up over that 300 batting average mark. Seven home runs and 41 RBIs. He's a versatile guy in the field. He plays third base. He plays the outfield positions as well. So he's able to do a little bit of both. But, uh, you know, he hasn't been the superstar that some people thought maybe he would be. He's not really in the talk for Rookie of the Year conversation as of yet. But that doesn't mean he's not going to turn into a terrific player. And, Tom, he's been real good against the Phillies, batting 462 against them, knocking in some runs as well, a couple of home runs in four games. So uh, he's been a, an interesting name, a guy that I'm sure Phillies fans have been keeping their eye on. They're not tearing uh, the cover off the ball for Arizona, but certainly a solid player indeed. Well, you talk about the multi-hit games. He's tops among uh, National League rookies with 31. I guess the big question will be, where will he play moving forward? You saw the breakdown of, of games at third, 31 games. And the rest in the outfield. Now the Lamb kid has been good for Chip Hale, but they could always go righty Tomas, lefty Lamb, if they want to. Two balls, one strike to him. That one's hit through the hole on the left side, a base hit. So he leads off the second with a base hit against Buchanan and Jared Saltalamaki is coming up. You know, and if you're the the Diamondbacks. You have a pretty set outfield. Here's his home run last night, Tomas's. It went deep to left. I and deep, but not many people are going to miss that one. Hanging sliders go a long way. And because of what he did last night, it's why he's playing tonight. Because Ender Inciarte, according to Chip Hale yesterday, was going to play today. Salta Lamacchia hitting a buck 79, and he takes strike one. Well, if he continues to get pitches to hit like that single, another belt high fastball. These are big league hitters, not going to miss it. Salta Lamaki has started the year as a member of the Miami Marlins. Played only nine games with them after signing a free agent deal last year. Side one and two. Jared pinch hit last night. He got hit on the kneecap. And stayed in the game and played first base. There's Wellington Castillo who caught last night and had an unbelievable evening. This is scheduled to be an off day for him. Even though he took that foul ball off the face mask, he said before the game that he felt fine. Chip Hale said that this was an off day that he had planned for him several days ago. It also helps that Salta Lamaki is hitting 429 against the That helps. Cannon. Outside, three and two. It's a good little sinker, down and away. Roll me over, 463. Dirt ball four. And then I'll put runners on first and second. Tomorrow, start your day with Neil Hartman, John Gonzalez, and Barrett Brooks live from Eagles training camp. Wake up to the latest on the Eagles as they prepare for Sunday's preseason game with the Colts. Watch Breakfast on Broad weekday mornings from 6 to 8 on the Comcast Network. buzz surrounding the Philadelphia Eagles and what they're anticipating to, to do this year. Well Aaron Hill is the batter. Hill has always hit the Phillies well. He's hit an 11 straight. 
against the Phillies this year overall 216 with four homers and 26 runs batted in. And that pitch is low one ball and no strikes. A tough time locating his fastball right now. He's kind of in the same boat that Harang was last yeah, night. It's Salt to Lamaki at one and two. Ends up walking him. You know, there's a guy that's hitting 179. Now he's got Hill up. And he's spiking fastballs. Cameron Rupp, Freddie Galvis both go out. David working on the mound a little bit. Look at the averages in the bottom half of this lineup 179, 216, 229. These are the guys you have to get quick outs against. Yeah, it's not exactly like the uh, the bottom of the lineup last night. Yeah. There's a strike at the knees, two and one. Looks like Aaron Hill was taking there. Yeah, and you know, the guys at the top, you're going to have to run some deep counts with those guys. The guys at the bottom with these numbers. Make your pitch. Get your boys back in the dugout. Inside came back with a change up and now it's three and one. On deck is Chris Owings. Owings had a pretty good night last night too. Ground ball toward the hole. Galvis has got it. Flips over to second off the glove of Utley. And everybody is safe. Well, it would have been a fantastic play all the way around. They scored a base hit, and the bases are now loaded. It's a good play for Frank just to get to the ball. I think if. Blanco can get back to third enough time. He didn't know whether to get to it or not, so Freddie is forced to go back to second and short hops chase. How quickly to get to his feet to make that throw. Freddy. Unfortunately, it was too low. He would have had him too. So the bases are loaded. And here is Owings. The Phillies will set up for two. They'll concede a run. Phillies up one nothing. That ball is drilled deep to left field. Ruff going back, reaches out. He can't get it. It's a ground rule double. Two runs will score. It's now a 2 1 ball game. But Owings with his third hit of the series. Now that was a pitch that was just left up in the zone, a first pitch that was left up in the zone. Smart by Owings. You have a guy that's struggling with command issues, base is loaded. You know he's going to want to work ahead, be aggressive on that first one. That's exactly what Owings did. And Darren Ruff took a step in before he went back. I don't know if it would have mattered at all because that ball was hit pretty hard. Now the infield is in. The batter is Jeremy Hellickson. Phillies well, will try to cut the run off at the plate. Nothing doing there. Hellickson lines one to center. Two runs will score. It's now 4 1 D backs. Everybody's getting into the swing of things. Just too much of the plate. I think everybody was in agreement today that the key was going to be. For him to spot his fastball, but it's got to be down in this inning. Actually, both innings, it's not down. It's not down. And to have a pitcher, that's a pretty good swing there by Hellickson, but I don't care if it's a pitcher or not, you have to stay down. Yeah, excellent athlete, Hellickson. Could have played basketball or baseball in college at the University of Iowa. Now, the top of the order, A.J. Pollock, and Pollock fouls it at the plate, 0 and 1.
three hitters in a row first pitch swinging. Well, I think you pointed out to the fact he was struggling with his command. They went up there with a game plan to try to go after a first pitch strike. Pollock Buns takes low, one ball, one strike. Pollock single his first time up was left over third base during the bottom of the first inning. Oh. And he's ahead, one ball, two strikes. Now at a major league scoreboard, the Rays have defeated the Braves 2 0. Kevin Kiermeyer accounted for both runs for the Rays. And a line drive base hit it to right field. Hellickson goes to second. Frank Poor stumbles a little bit. They throw behind Pollock. That is four straight hits allowed by David Buchanan. We talked about A.J. Pollock in the open. This guy, line to line, he's got some wheels. And he plays a very, very good center field. Good looking player. Bob McCord just asked uh, David Buchanan if he was okay, and Buchanan said, I'm fine. Uh, this is Pete McCannon's. He was talking before the ball game. He said, Boy, we really need David to go deep into the game. We have guys available. Uh, but Justin DeFreitas is not available. He's the quote unquote long man. He said, I just hope I don't look up and I'm in trouble in the second or third inning. Well, he's in trouble here in the second inning. Aaron Rang last night. He scuffled against the same Diamondbacks lineup. Five and a third allowed 12 hits. So already six hits for Arizona. And the Phillies looking for an out here in the bottom of the second. Jake Lamb struck out his first time up. Swing and a miss against the change up 0 and 1. Michael Franco, the x rays were negative on his wrist, so it's a contusion. Boy, is that good news. Mm -hmm. There's a strike, and it's 0 2. A lot of ice, a lot of stem. And day off tomorrow, and a day off on Thursday. Side one and two. Thirty seven pitches overall for Buchanan, twenty five in this inning. Ground ball off the foot of Lamb, so foul ball. Mage wanted to. See Lamb wearing that ankle protector, but not one over his toes. Yeah, it might be a little longer next time. That one's hit out towards second, caught by Utley. And no double play. So what a way the Phillies get the first out. And now Goldschmidt's coming up. First baseman, Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt fly to right. Fly to the track his first time up.
David now has allowed 11 earned runs in his last two outings. It's amazing how much Goldschmidt's setup reminds me of Buster Posey's setup. Bat straight down over the back. That's a good call. He's a bigger dude, obviously, but you're right. He's a lot bigger, and you know, as the pitch is coming in, obviously he gets that bat back up and centered into a good hitting position. Strong position. For what he's turned into, it's remarkable. He was an eighth round selection. And there was questions coming out of uh, college uh, whether you know with his uppercut whether he'd be able to perform on this level but they also wondered how good of a defensive first baseman he would be this turned out to be a gold glove first baseman he's answered both questions and he takes ball four and that'll load up the bases and David Peralta will be the batter last night the Diamondbacks had one inning where they sent 11 to the plate so now they've Set nine to the plate here in the second. A little stretching going on. Defreitas is stretching his arm. Pete said that he wasn't going to be available today, but maybe they'll use him. That ball's hit well. Deep to left field. Rough going back in. It is an opposite field. Grand slam for David Peralta. It's now 8 1. Diamondbacks on top. Second career grand slam for David Peralta. And again, first pitch swinging. Oh, this is a totally different team than the one we saw back in Philadelphia. They have, they, lot, they have a lot of confidence right now. They got up out over the plate. We talk about how lefties like the ball down and in. Because most of their swing planes are on a certain that certain path. They also like the ball up and away. My oh my oh this game has changed. In a blink of an eye. Eight runs of score. And still just one man down. Tomas takes a strike. Yes, money. Tomas began the inning with a single to left field. And that'll get past Blanco down the left field line. Tomas on his way to second. And he will get there with a stand up double, his second hit of the inning. And here's Salta Lamacchia. Salta Lamacchia had one of the key at bats uh, in this inning. He and Hellickson. The walk to Salta Lamacchia was a big one. I know there's been a lot of big hits, but by walking Salta Lamacchia, you then allowed Aaron Hill and Chris Owings to bat. Both got on base. Owings picked up a two run double, and then Hellickson, another big at bat, a two run single. Breaking ball. Not many of them tonight. 0 and 1. You're right. That at bat had him 1 and 2. I mean, you could look at a number of at bats during this inning, but that was a big one because he, he, he was ahead of them. 1 and 2. Bottom of the lineup coming up. And he just really started to have command issues with his fastball. Fly ball to left field. That's playable for Darren Ruff. Tomas tags at second. And they'll just draw the throw. And there are two outs. And Aaron Hill will be the batter. Second baseman, Aaron. Well, this is the most runs the Diamondbacks have scored in an inning this year. The previous high was seven.
They are feeling it right now as a team. I, I wouldn't want to play them. These guys are anxious to get to the plate. Foul back 0 and 2. I mean, their pitching staff uh, is nothing on paper to write home about, but De La Rosa was pretty good last night. But I don't know if I'd want to play them as you went down, you know, as the season comes down to the wire, if they keep hitting like this. Turner Ward is their hitting coach. The assistant hitting coach is Mark Grace. Now Grace was a guy that obviously knew he was a very, very, very good hitter. I think he led all the 90s in hits. That is correct. But in the National League. The thing that Gracie could do is he could relay it. He loved talking about it. I'm sure these guys are feeding off of that. That is a blast deep to left field rough going back forget about it. It is gone a two run home run for Aaron Hill. 10 1 in favor of the Diamondbacks. Uh, there's not a whole lot the Phillies can do at this point. David Buchanan's out there at least. To try to get through this inning, if not beyond. And 10 runs and nine hits for Arizona. Feel for David Buchanan right now. Out to right field, Jeff Francoeur won't get this one. And will drop for a hit. Owings uh, at second base will stop there. So he has two doubles in this inning. And that mound's got to feel like an island right now. I don't know what Pete McCann's going to be able to do here. Well, they're going to stretch somebody out that's not normally stretched out. It's going to have to be. Heck, they may even have to send a starter out there. It's going to be Naris. Naris has, as Pete said, a rubber arm. But even if he throws now, he's not going to be able to throw for more than a couple of innings, even with that rubber arm. Here's Helix and he had a two run single his first time up in this inning. Outside one and oh. Ten runs. Two home runs. Three doubles. Couple walks. It's a nightmare. This is an absolute nightmare. Grand slam by Peralta, two run home run by Aaron Hill. Owings has two doubles. Hellickson has two hits and three RBIs. Wow, this is amazing. You're going to watch baseball for a long time and not see anything like this. This is an 11 run inning for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Where the pitcher has two hits and three RBIs. AJ Pollock will bat for the second time. Cameron Ruff going over to a chat with him. You kind of hear the dugout. They wanted Cameron to go talk to him. They also said throw over the first a couple of times just to get Naris loose. This, this is the 15th batter to bat in the inning. So you have six guys that have batted twice in this inning. Paul Goldschmidt doesn't have a hit. Thank goodness. Here comes Pete Buchanan. That's going to be at 45 pitches for David Buchanan.
lonely out there on the mound when something like this happens. So a pitching change here in the bottom of the second. As David Buchanan's evening is complete. 11 runs on 10 base hits. Hector Neris coming in for the Phils. And the Diamondbacks are still batting. Pete McCannon's had to go to his bullpen way earlier than he had hoped. Hector Naris will take over for David Buchanan. Naris 2 0 with a 2.87 ERA. They're going to look for a couple innings out of him tonight. This half inning uh, has been a little less than a half hour. It's been 27 minutes. For David Buchanan, it probably feels like a lifetime. We mentioned his last time he allowed seven earned runs. It's 18 earned runs for David in five and two thirds in his last two starts. So Naris is ready. And AJ Pollock takes a strike, batting for the second time in this game, in this inning. There are five players in the Diamondbacks lineup with two hits. So we're going to miss, and it's 0 2. Four of those players have two hits in this inning alone. I haven't seen anything like this in a long time. I can't remember seeing anything like this where one inning has produced so much. 0 2 pitch outside and low, 1 and 2. You really do feel for David Buchanan. Oh. I tell you, it's such a great kid. Ground ball to third, foul ball. Well, and just uh, off his spring training and how good he was during the spring. And he was really good. I know everybody says that you can't always look at spring training in September numbers and hang your hat on him. But he was really good in spring training. He walked two, and it wasn't until his last outing in the exhibition game against the Pittsburgh Pirates. One ball, two strikes to Pollock. And Pollock hits one in the air to right field. Frank Poor going back. He's got a beat on it. And the inning is finally over. But what an inning it was. A season high. 11 runs in one inning for the Arizona Diamondbacks. You want to see a backbreaker? Well, if anything was close to it, it was David Peralta's grand slam the opposite way.
all the information, please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Ben, which pitchers threw the two no hitters in Diamondbacks history? Which pitchers threw the two no hitters in Diamondbacks history? The answer will be revealed in just a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. Ender Inciarte comes on to play right field for Arizona. I don't know if Yasmani Tomas did something. Well, this is what's happened in the first two innings. The Arizona Diamondbacks have become the second team in Major League Baseball this year to score 11 runs uh, or more in an inning. They scored 11 in this inning, in the second inning. We go to the third. Look at all those numbers. I mean, Hill with two hits, Owings with two hits, Hellickson with two hits, three RBIs, and two runs scored in one inning. At a loss for words, Tom, I yeah. tell you. Well, there we go. Last time the D backs have scored 11 runs in one inning. 2010, they scored 13 in the fourth against the Pirates. The Yankees a couple weeks ago scored 11 runs against the uh, Texas Rangers in one inning. So Chase Utley will lead it off. Take strike one. Ground ball to second base. Aaron Hill is up with it. Well, there's one away. I'm going to bring Odubel Herrera to the plate. Boy, if you're Hellickson after the last couple starts that he's had. You look up at that scoreboard and see 11 runs, and he was he was a big part of it. And just two innings, you're thinking, all right, well, I could just start firing strikes here. The number just looks so odd up there at the bottom of that box score. Well, particularly in the second inning. In any inning, I guess, but in the second inning, it even looks stranger, doesn't it? There's three 11s on the scoreboard right now. <laughs> Well, he's still going to pitch his game. Yeah. Stick to the scouting reports. Yeah, because he didn't come in here with great earth shattering uh, numbers. 5.06 earned run average. That's pretty high. 11 2 5 in his last two starts. One ball, no strikes to Herrera. Change up low. Two balls, no strikes. So double. 13 game hitting streak. First time up, grounded out to shortstop. Popped it up, shallow left field. Owings is out, Peralta is in, and Peralta says he has it. Two away. And Michael uh, Franco spot coming up. Andres Blanco will bat. It's now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag Philly Photo Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T Mobile. Blanco came on to pinch run for Franco after he was hit by pitches last time up. And to reiterate, it is a contusion, it's yep. not broken. Find out more after the game and see whether uh, how long uh, he possibly could be out. That one's back to the screen. One ball, one strike. I wonder what Pete's talking to the guys about. Maybe he's asking who wants to pitch. Now, Pete said before the game, he said, I really. I've used a position player one time in the minor leagues. I used three different position players in one game. Said I don't like doing it. Well, you never like doing it because that means your ball club is yeah. on the really, really. Charlie Manuel never liked doing short it. end of it. Charlie never. Charlie thought it was uh, embarrassing to do it. He kind of feels the same way, but at a necessity, he may need to do that. Uh, 
That one is looped out to center, waiting for it is Pollock. And the side is retired. A one, two, three, third. We will go to the bottom of the third inning. Hopefully the results aren't the same. W.B. Mason, you can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com. And buy McDonald's. Double the love at a McDonald's with a double cheeseburger and small fry for just $2.50. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Now we go to the bottom of the third. It's 11-1. Diamondbacks on top. And Jake Lamb will lead it off. Jake Lamb is 0 for 2. He has struck out. He's also lined out. Been a very unproductive night for Jake Lamb. Considering what everybody else has done. Puts that one down the left field line. Now Naris. His objective, get as many outs as you can as quickly mm -hmm. as you can. That's a good spot right there. Not to bicker about every pitch, but that fastball had some life in it down on the inside, off the inside part of the plate. Two balls, one strike. Uh, down the left field line again out of play, and it's two and two. Boy, Doug Gettings was waiting for Hector to show his face because he wanted to fire one back to him. Loves it. Outside, three and two. Well, last team to score 11 runs versus the Phillies in one inning, the Astros, in May of 1975. Wow. It's a long time ago. Catch is made by Ruff, and there's one away. Well, this is Goldschmidt's uh, stance. This is what you were talking about before, Ben. You're right on with this. I, you know what? It's just the way they position their bat before. They start Buster Posey obviously on the left Paul Goldschmidt on the right. Now Buster has a little bit more of an exaggerated leg kick but they both get into pretty much the same hitting position and Hector Neris just hit Paul Goldschmidt right in the leg. And Doug Eddings immediately warns both dugouts. I thought he was going to throw him out for a second. I was like oh no. But he warns both dugouts. 
course Michael Franco hit by a pitch uh, earlier in this game and was taken out. Well, so the answer from the Phillies and that's what you were talking about before with Chappelle. Peralta takes high one ball no strikes. Yeah, I think Chip was upset because he probably knew that. They were going to get hit as well. Well, and it would, if you're going to pick out the best player, you're going to, and it would be Goldschmidt, of course. Ground ball to second. That should be two. Hurry up, Freddie. Get out of the way. And he does. Four, six, three, double play. And the side is retired. So nothing across for the Diamondbacks. We played three. On to the fourth. The Phillies down 11 to one. Like 3M super sticky post it notes available in a world of colors and ideal for the most hard to stick surfaces. Personally delivered to your desktop for free by who? But WB Mason. Well, it's 11 1 Diamondbacks on top. Even the luck of the Fanatic isn't helping out here tonight. Ran into a bunch of police fans walking the concourse tonight before the ball game. Doug Eddings went out and talked to Jeremy Hellickson and said, Listen, I know you're going to have to pitch inside. Stick to your game plan. It, it, it's going to be obvious if it does happen. But, yeah. you know, you look at it, it's 11 0. It just looks bad. I think Doug Eddings would have run Hector Neris if the ball was up a little higher. He did the right way, hit him in the tail. Well, one pitch to Howard. Inside one and one. Yeah, I don't think Hellickson's going to go out there and try to hit anybody in this spot. He's just trying to, like you said, he's going to have to try to pitch inside, and it's up to the umpire to understand that's part of the game. Well, you've been on both sides of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, as a catcher, you're. You probably sit there and think, oh, I, you know, there's not much you can do behind the plate. You're trying to get a pitcher back in the right swing of things. And on the flip side, if you have an 11 1 lead, you're thinking, all right, I got to get my guy to make sure he maintains his game plan. Yeah. Now, I said Neris, his objective was to get as many outs as quickly as he can. Same thing for Jeremy Hellickson. I get outs quickly. Chopper right side and waiting for it is the third baseman Lamb. 5 3 on the putout. And one out for Jeff Francoeur. Right I wonder what the largest comeback is. What's that Phillies Dodgers game? At Dodger Stadium. It was a big one. 
Frank Cor rips it into the alley in left center field, and that's going to go all the way to the wall. And he's going to get to at least second base. That's where he'll stop his 13th double of the year. Man, what a sweet swing. That ball came off hot, I tell mm -hmm. you. Left fielder, Darren. Well, Frenchy not changing his approach, Tom. No. Well, if you're a hitter, I don't think you can change your approach, right? You can't. You don't want to go up there and make it a quick out. You want to go up there if you feel like you can hit one, you go right after it. Darren Ruff doubled his only time up. Takes a strike, 0 and 1. And this is the last time I'll, I'll bring it up, but you know, for fans at home watching, Hector Neris didn't hit Paul Goldschmidt because it's 11 to 1. No. He hit him because the Phillies' best hitter got hit. You know, and I'm sure that was unintentional, but you got to take care of your teammates. Yeah, and if there is a right way to do it, I mean, he did it the right way, hitting him in the backside. Yeah. He hit him on the tail, and it just looks. Bad because it is 11 to 1. That's all I'll say. All right, Forrest. <laughs> one one pitch. That one pulled foul, and it's one and two. There are two balls and two strikes. Fouls it toward the upper deck. Two balls, two strikes to Darren. Darren was scheduled to play tomorrow because the left-hander was due to pitch. Uh, he still might, depending on the how Dominic Brown feels. Actually, I shouldn't say he might. He's going to be in there either at first base or in the outfield. <laughs> Fly ball down the right field line. Ender Inciarte has room. Frank Poor tags. Inciarte's throw is not in time, but it was a good one. Yes. Well, that was a big time throw. Two outs. Runner at third. Sure was. Perfect throw. Shortstop. Ready. Galvez. You see Lamb try and deke Frenchy there. Oh, no play here. There's not, not going to be a play. There's nothing to see here. Just come on in. So, Frank Kors over third. Here's Freddie Galvis. He bunted his last time up and was retired at first base. So, 0 for 1 for Freddie. How about those splits that we were talking about in Freddie's last at bat? First 35 games, 37 games, 355. Next 35 games, 165. Last 34 games, 302. I mean, that's making some adjustments, isn't it? Peaks and valleys. I think the hope is is that what he's done the last 34 games, hitting 302, that he'll sustain that to the end of the season. Stay throughout six months. Just avoid those. Big valleys. Ground ball foul, and it's one and two. Well, that 165 is a pretty big valley. Yeah. This is where you avoid those big guys, and yep. counts like this one, two. Protect. 
Swing and a miss. He gets him with a breaking ball. Side is retired. No runs. One hit. And one man left over at third. That's Jeff Ragg Poor. Middle of the fourth. He backs up by 10. Buy at Toyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Jefferson, where health is all we do. Call 1 800 Jeff now or visit Jefferson.edu. And buy Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Chase Field is the site. Beautiful place. Roof is closed. We've been here in April and May a lot where the roof is open. As the weather is pretty nice outside. Now there was a point today where we probably could have had the roof open because it was a little cooler. But it warmed up again. Ender Inciarte will lead it off. As Manny Tomas is singled and doubled in this spot, but he was lifted. And Inciarte fouls it off the third base line, and it's 0 1. I wonder if something had some type had of injury. Have. Yeah. Maybe a hammy or there's no reason to take him out. No. After getting two hits and scoring two runs. Plus he's a rookie. Rookies don't get that. Kind of treatment. <laughs> Sharply to Chase Utley at second base. He's up with it. And one away for Salta Lamakia. Freitas is still stretching in the bullpen. There's a strike on the outside corner. Out of play, 0 and 2. All right, so two quick strikes from Neris to Salt Lavakia. Let's see if we can elevate a, a baseball here. Letter high. Swing it a miss off the glove of Cameron Rupp. And Salt to Lamaki is going to get to first. So a strikeout and I think pass ball, but we'll see how they score it. The ball doesn't hit the dirt. It's got to be a pass ball. Dirt. I agree. And they do score to pass ball the third Second of the base. year for Rupp. Do you think he wanted something else? I do. Unless that ball just cut. Because it looked like he was ready for a split. You know, he was getting down low. The way he was set up, he was looking for something down and away to a lefty. 
pitch ends up cutting inside, but usually I stick up for my homies back there, Tom, but that is a pass ball. <laughs> that always drove me nuts. If you knew that it was a cross up, not that it was a cross up, but when people would always refer to a ball getting by the catcher as a pass ball. So, no, it's a wild pitch. <laughs> I would too. Aaron Hill homered in that 11 run second inning. He also singled. The little guy, but he's got some pop. One ball, two strikes. You mentioned that crowd, Tom. Even when they got the 11 runs, it wasn't very loud in here. Very quiet. It's very quiet. Well, it's not the biggest crowd, but very subdued here in the desert. And he takes it out of him. It was the dust storm. We got everybody riled up today. We survived it, though, didn't yeah, we? We did. Big old tan cloud just flowing toward us. <laughs> Blowing <laughs> a wall. Out to right field. Jeff Francoeur heading back. And he's there. Two outs. And Chris Owings is coming up. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD and over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.TV premium. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Every night on every device, blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Oh, yes, Mati Tomas tightness in his left calf. First pitch to Owings is low, 1 0. Popped up. Rupp will give it a peek and out of play. Oh, no. The lady didn't realize that the ball was uh, coming down in her area. Hopefully, she's okay. Well, the paramedics right there immediately. You never like to see that, no. I tell you. I think she's right. in too much shock when it initially I hit her. I think that's what it was. She just said, I'm wondering, where's the ball going? Fly ball to center field. Oduble started back. Now he comes in. He's under it. And the inning is over. No runs, no hits. One man left. We've played four. We'll go to the fifth. The Diamondbacks up 11 to 1. Fans, if you are celebrating your birthday here.
his answer. All right, Ben. Well, here is the question. Which pitchers threw the two no hitters in Diamondbacks history? Well, the one I would have to assume has his number retired here, number 51, right. the unit, Randy, Randy Johnson, Johnson. That is correct. And the other, the Braves. I would have to say, would be Edwin Jackson. Edwin Jackson is correct. And the Tampa. only reason I remember that is because of, I believe he had eight walks and the pitch count. I don't know what the pitch count was, but it was high. Yeah, his walk total was pretty high. You got a buzzer for the Randy Johnson one. I don't know if they were just practicing or not, but <laughs> a lot of faith in me down there, huh? <laughs> Lock back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Cameron Ruff fouls it back. Randy Johnson's game was in Atlanta. That was a perfect, perfect game. game. In fact, we just saw highlights of it uh, last week at the ballpark because he was part of that round table with Bob Costas. With John Smoltz and Pedro Martinez, and they they talked about that. Round ball foul went two to Rupp. He's talking to Luis Gonzalez before the ball game, and Luis is part of the uh, legends race with Randy Johnson. There are the legends. He's going to Japan with Randy tomorrow. They're going over for eight days. What? Uh, kind of a a goodwill trip that the Diamondbacks are taking. Tony LaRus is going. Although he's not staying for the entire eight days. It's a long way to go to not stay for eight days. Have you ever gone over there? No. Never been across the pond. Here's the one two pitch to Cameron Rupp. That one has floated foul over the first base dugout. Cameron would have filled his choice his first time up. Outside, two and two. Now you talk about those two guys, Luis Gonzalez and Randy Johnson. The only two to have their numbers retired. I'm starting to wonder why Kurt Schilling doesn't have his number retired here. What he meant to that world championship team. Well, again, we were talking about the suggestion box the other day. Maybe you could throw that into the suggestion box here at Arizona. <laughs> I mean, they had a good ball club, but that team doesn't win a World Series without Kurt Schilling. Well, the, the two of them combined. Could be uh, the amount of time he was here. Yeah. Three and a half years. At least traded him here, and then he went off to Boston after that. But he did win a world championship. Three balls, two strikes to Cameron Rupp. And he fouls it back to the screen. There's a lot of good one two punches over the years in the playoffs, and I don't know if you could find a better one two punch than those two. The primes of their careers. Big game pitchers. That one's out to right field, and that'll drop in for a base hit. Nice at bat, Cameron. So Rupp is aboard a leadoff single. Hector, Hector Neris. And that'll bring Hector Neris to the plate. Well, Murph, we've seen a, a variety of lineups for Pete McCannon between Ruiz and Rupp. Uh, there's no real rhyme or reason for how he does it. It's all depending on matchups. Yeah, you know, Tom, it's one of the real challenges that Pete McCannon has faced uh, since taking over as the manager is, you know, trying to find some playing time for these young guys while still getting his veteran guys some playing time as well. And one of those positions, of course, is the catcher's position. Cameron Rupp uh, has, you know, started to get a lot more playing time than, uh, than uh, he was accustomed to early in the season. But I talked to Pete McCannon about, you know, how he's trying to balance it. He said, well, what he's trying to do first and foremost is he's going to allow Cameron Rupp to catch some of the younger guys. And Aaron Nola and and uh, in Morgan as well, Adam Morgan, and you saw him catching David Buchanan uh, today as well. But but he doesn't want to forget, obviously, about Carlos Ruiz. So he said, you know, it's going to be a lot of two days on, two days off kind of things. And he said, if one of them were to get hot offensively, you know, you look at the numbers offensively for both of them combined. It hasn't been a stellar production out of the catcher's spot uh, all season long. If one of them were to get hot offensively, then he might stick with them for a little bit. But, uh, you know, he doesn't want either of the guys to sit for too long. 
Uh, you know, so he really is just trying to balance him day in and day out. He talked about doing that with his infield today as well. You know, Cesar Hernandez getting the night off tonight. Uh, it's just one of those, those challenges that he has to do as this team tries to, you know, turn the corner and start to find out about some of these young guys. Well, Cam certainly has shown a better arm than Carlos uh, right now behind the plate. Still, I agree with what Murph was saying that Pete talked about. Somebody still has to start hitting a little bit more. <laughs> the combined numbers aren't great. Chase Utley stands in, and Utley hits that one out toward right field. That'll be in for a base hit. So, one out single for Utley. That puts runners on first and second. And Odubel Herrera is coming up. Good swing by Chase there. First at bat gets a cookie to hit, rolls it over to first. Second at bat. Another cookie rolls it over to second base. It's a better pitch here. Good swing on it. Very aggressive. It's that typical Chase Utley swing right there. Short and sweet. And now a double who has grounded out to short and flied out to left. In the dirt. Adam Lowen in the bullpen. His high water mark down in uh, the minor leagues is two innings during this stint as a pitcher. Popped up left side of the infield. Third baseman Lamb is under it. The fly rule was called. So two outs. And Andres Blanco is coming up. Oh, the Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Reds and the Padres are in the top of the fourth inning. It's 11 nothing San Diego. San Diego was off yesterday. They didn't score a whole lot against the Phillies, but they're taking it out on the Cincinnati Reds right now. A popular number in the NL West. <laughs> San Diego is behind Arizona right now in the standings. 0 and 1 to Blanco. Flight out to center his first time up. And started that game for the Reds. Now he didn't give up as much as David Buchanan, but it was close. An inning and a third, seven hits and seven earned runs. Outside two and one. By the way, Toronto won again. They beat Oakland four to two. Have you said that recently that they've won? I think I've said it 12 times in the last uh, 12 games. I've said it every night that Troy tulowitzki has been a Blue Jay. In the dirt again, three and one. The Padres Reds game, you would expect a score like that to be in Cincinnati. Yes. Not, not at Petco Park. No. Popular team, the Blue Jays. <laughs> they have a fan planted in every ballpark. Matt would be so happy. Out to center field. Pollock on the run. This is pretty well hit. Back toward the fence. He's there. And he makes the catch. A 400 foot fly out for Andres Blanco. No runs, two hits, and two men left for the Phils as we go to the bottom of the fifth.
Knowledge Bank. The Phillies Junior RBI League has been teaching kids how to play the game since 1989. Donate a baseball glove or two to the next generation of baseball greats at the Citizens Bank kiosk at Citizens Bank Park. At Citizens Bank, we want to help you bank better. So the next time you have a question about money, don't keep it to yourself. Ask a citizen. 11-1 Diamondbacks on top. This game is in the bottom of the fifth inning. So we're taking a look at some of the uh, numbers that the Diamondbacks have put up and the Phillies have allowed. Hector Neris does a nice job in two and a third. Adam Lowen takes over in his second straight outing. Ben, we talked about the largest deficit the Phillies overcame. You talked about the Dodger game uh, back at Dodger Stadium in 1990. It's a good memory, baseball fan. You. It's always on sports classics and just watching that. I mean, there were some costly errors that the Dodgers had, but it was just a an onslaught of offense. It was August 21st, 1990. Phillies trailed at 11 to one in the top of the eighth and won at 12 to 11. That's right. Ellickson two for two. Outside, two balls, one strike. I mean, remember. Watching Tommy Lasorda's face, and it was getting redder and redder and redder. <laughs> he was disgruntled. Well, if they come back tonight, they're going to show it over and over again, and he'll be disgruntled again. Dodgers jersey, Royals jersey, spring training homes. Saw a Gronkowski jersey earlier. Well, it is training camp. Bronx big in the desert. Yeah. Three balls and two strikes. Super Bowl. Was here that the diamond that the uh, Patriots won. There's a strikeout for Lowen. So one away here in the fifth inning. AJ Pollock's coming up. Wednesday, August 19th, when the Phillies take on the Blue Jays at Star Wars Night, presented by Coles. Come dress as your favorite Star Wars character and be entertained by Star Wars characters, music, movie, clips, and more. Go to phillies.com slash theme nights for more information. Pollock is two for three. And a slider in there. It's 0 and 1. For those watching at home and wondering why Neris only came out of the game after 29 pitches the answer is we don't know <laughs> I thought you were going to give something profound there Ben no the only thing I can think of is you know we say he does have a rubber arm he can go every day no one goes to the corner Pollock on his way to second base it is 26 double of the year you know if something God forbid something happens tomorrow where they need some more relief you know, maybe they'll, they can use it for two innings tomorrow. If his arm really is that durable. Well, I think the other thing, too, is if you can get two out of low in here, and then you can get one from uh, three different pitchers uh, as the game moves on, then you're you're actually in pretty good shape yep. going into tomorrow's finale, and then you got the off day on Thursday. I would think there's going to be some kind of move, though, just to shore things up. Because you have the off day on Thursday, the off day on Monday, you can restructure your rotation where you only need four starters. Fastball outside, one ball, no strikes. We see Aaron Noah. Starting tomorrow. One of those fouled away. You only need two other pitchers to get one inning apiece. Correct. After Lowen's done. Unless the Phillies pull the comeback from 1990. Threat me with a good time. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. It's one and two. Ball 
blocked by Cameron Rupp, and it's two balls and two strikes to Lamb. Well, out in the pool, they're not really concerned about what the score is. Out there having a good old time. Yep. Bit low with a fastball, three and two. I'd like to see that velocity there at 93 from Adam Lowen. You combine that with a good slider, you're going to have some success, especially against lefties. And a strike three call, 93 miles an hour, and Lamb is struck out for the second time tonight. Now there are two outs. I asked Low and I said, did you uh, consider going to play for Canada in the Pan Am games because of this? I and mean, to add this to the staff that they had. And he said, you know, if it was a different situation, I would have. He said, but my objective was to get back to the big leagues. And I was in double A at the time. And I was just hitting my stride. Murph talked about how he felt like he hit his stride in double A. He said, I just couldn't jeopardize it. He said, I did watch it though. As Canada defeated the United States to win the gold medal in the Pan Am Games. Anytime you can represent your country, I mean, what an honor. Well, he's done it as a position player and a pitcher during his career. One ball, no strikes to Goldschmidt. Outside, 2 0. Oh. I like his windup. I like his follow through especially it's pretty simple. It's simple but his follow through is good and it's down and past his right knee. So down and past his landing leg. Now when you converted to being a pitcher. I mean is that something that you had to teach yourself. Uh, not really honestly I, I just tried to throw it as hard as I could. And you were pretty simple with your motion. Yeah it was simple. I'll take a look at his setup here I mean he just. Straight up and down, drops and fires. And we just missed three and one. Now, were you from the stretch all the time? Or no, you, I used a windup. You did? I was a starter time. I thought you were going to come back up as a closer. <laughs> well, I was, and then I hurt my shoulder and had to get shoulder surgery on my AC joint, and then I went back to starting. No, I didn't realize yeah. that. Outside, ball four, so Goldschmidt draws a walk. Yeah, don't take offense to this, but I, I wasn't sure. I didn't know whether you could sustain it because you were a catcher yeah. and decided to turn yourself into a pitcher. For Lowen, his feeling is I'm a reliever because I don't know if I can sustain it to be a starter. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, being a catcher, throwing the ball a couple hundred times a day, you think about it as a starter, you only have to do it every fifth day. No one's pulled foul by Peralta. I say only. I mean, obviously, there's bullpens in between and playing catch and long toss. Andres Blanco gives that a look, but it's out of play, and it's 0-2. Awfully close. Those two kids went diving on top of the dugout. I know they know their surroundings, but they were awfully close to going off that dugout. I might get scolded. Oh, yeah. There may be a little reprimanding going on. There's a liner into center field, a base hit for Peralta, rounding third, heading for home. 
is A.J. Pollock. It's 12 1 in favor of the D backs. Five RBIs for Peralta. That magic number five. He had five hits the other day in a game. And now he has five RBIs two days later in this ball game. I don't know why, but no one chooses to go to a slide step. We'll be trying throwing off Peralta's timing. He goes to a slide step. Unconventional from what he's been doing in this inning and what he did last night. Five RBIs for Peralta ties his career high. Foul tip by NCRT and it's 0 and 1. Talk about his follow through. Watch his throwing arm come down and pass his right knee, that landing knee. See that? That's good form. There's no recoil there. You're not letting the ball go and ripping your arm back. It's a lot of closers do. You develop some arm issues that way. Very good follow through. Natural fluid movement. And he's gotten ahead of the last two batters, last two lefties. And he's one and two to Enciarte here in the bottom of the fifth. Watch him here again down and through. Jamie Romach has come in as a pinch runner for the D backs. So he'll run for pinch David runner. Peralta. David Peralta. Number four, Jamie Romack. So Romack is in, and Ciarte gets a nice round of applause as he should. One two pitch. Now toward left center field. Herrera on the run and gets there. Boy, did he cover a lot of ground or what? He tracks it down. Side is retired. One run scores on the RBI single by David Peralta. We'll go to the sixth inning with the D backs on top. 12 to 1. Eyes of advanced scouts all around baseball. A slow start in May has turned into a sensational summer. Mike Cal is swinging his bat with confidence and is piling up production. He's among all rookie leaders in home runs, doubles, and RBIs. Franco's other game has been on display as well, defending the hot corner at a high level with skill and precision. The Phillies' young third baseman has been a treat to watch, and it's brought to you by. Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, the Phillies trail at 12 to 1 as we go to the top of the sixth inning, and Michael Franco is not in the lineup because of this back in the first inning. Hit him in the left wrist, and x rays were negative. He did leave the game. But what a scary moment for the Phillies. 
Well, he went right down to the ground. Wouldn't you? Mm. Here's Ryan Howard. Howard is one for two. Romack stays in the ball game for Peralta in left field. He came on a pinch run. Howard takes inside 2 and 0. Jeremy Hellickson. See Hellickson out on the mound. You see that Rawlings gold glove. Anybody who's won a gold glove gets that spe special distinction. The gold on the band, the gold around the R. Line drive caught by Jake Lamb. And one away. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Dodgers lead the Nationals 2 0 in the top of the fifth inning. Now see how a two run home run. He's starting to swing the bat a little bit better. Puig. He was apparently, according to reports, claimed off waivers and then pulled back by the Dodgers. There's that goal that we're talking about with Hellickson, who shared a gold glove a couple of years ago when he was part of the Rays. In fact, he's got a distinction. It's kind of interesting. The ball is hit out to center field. He is one of only two pitchers. In Major League Baseball, to have won a Rookie of the Year award, which he did with the Rays, and a Gold Glove. Fernando Valenzuela is the other one. Hmm. Got to be a good athlete with good form to win a Gold Glove. And Hellickson is a good athlete. Mentioned that out of high school, uh, he had a scholarship to go play baseball and basketball at the University of Iowa. Yet somehow he became an Iowa State season ticket holder for basketball. That makes you a good athlete, I'll tell you. So I'm going to miss, change up 0 2. You also have to get yourself in a good fielding position. Right. After you chuck it, you're a fielder. And he does get himself in a very, very good Position to field a baseball. It's not falling off to one side. A lot of righties fall off towards the first base side. And he strikes out Darren Ruff. So one, two, three, sixth inning for Jeremy Hellickson. Phillies go down in order. It's been a quiet night for them offensively. They were in a hole early, and they're unable to pull themselves out. And by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, don't adjust your television. That's the right score. It's 12 1, Diamondbacks on top. They scored 11 runs in the second inning. They scored 11 runs on 10 base hits. 
Phillies fans have not had a whole lot to cheer about after taking a one nothing lead. So it's 12 1. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Jared Salt to Lamakia leads it off. And he takes strike one. He walked back in the second. He flied out to left in the second. And he struck out in the fourth. That's hit well. Out to left field. Gone. Saw to Lamakia. Got way out front of that. And still picks up his fourth home run of the year. 13 1 Arizona. Lowen shook Cameron Rupp twice to get to a changeup. And it was up probably a little firmer than he wanted to. Saw Saltomaki get out in front a little bit, but watch his hands. Stays back just enough and hits level through the ball. Here's Aaron Hill who homered earlier in the game. Oh. Little cut on that fastball. It's 0 and 2. Aaron Hill at one point was a very good player, a two time Silver Slugger award winner at second base. That means on two different occasions he was the best offensive second baseman. Once in the National League, once in the American League. You see, he's got a quick bat. He went around on that slider and he'll just walk right out of the circle. So one away. Three strikeouts for Adam Lowen. Chris Owings coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murph. All right. Thank you, Tom. Well, as promised earlier in the game, we have selected the data strong fan photo of the game. And today's photo comes from Fan Gale. And this is one of the best ones yet, I think. And she says, Alumni weekend, best day ever. Take a look at that photo. Some very familiar faces. You see Dutch there. You see the Mike Lieberthal. Is that Bob Boone there in the middle? I think. Yep. Tweet your strongest fan photo to Philly Photo Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's all brought to you by the good folks at T-Mobile. That's a pretty good photo, Scott. That's right a there. great photo. Yeah. You found uh, found three of the most important catchers in Philly's history. That's right. A one pitch to Owings and it's 0 and 2. Maybe she can Photoshop Chooch into there at some point. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be perfect. Oh, well, maybe when Chooch goes into the Wall of Fame, goes yes. onto the Wall of Fame. Which will happen. Which at will some happen point. at some point, yep. Swing and a miss. Two outs. Four strikeouts for Lowen. And here's Jeremy Hellickson, who is two for three. You can see Lowen's got swing and miss stuff, strikeout stuff. But you make mistakes up, you're going to get hurt. Seems to be a lot of these, Tom. Yeah, off the mask. A lot of them. Our producer Jeff Halleckman and I were talking before the game, and you know it just seems like we get a ton of them recently, a lot on the on the the series in San Diego. Sammy talking to Scott Sheridan over there in the corner of the dugout. Upstairs, two and one. Wonder what that conversation's about. I don't know. Could be about Franco. Sammy doesn't look all too happy. He does not.
over to first base. That'll go foul. And the veteran Dave McKay will pick it up. Now it's full three and two. Hellickson does not look like a guy uh, who spends most of his time out on the mound. And he walks. He's been on base three times in this game. And now A.J. Pollock is coming up. Center field, A.J. Pollock. We don't like to see that happen. Yeah, we give Hellickson credit too. He kept himself alive. Fly ball, shallow center field. And that'll do it for the D backs in the bottom of the sixth inning. They do get another run on the home run by Jared Salta Lamacchia. So Hellickson has a 12 run cushion to work with when we come back. Game summary. David Buchanan last in inning at 2.30 allowed 11 runs in the second inning on 10 base hits. Michael Franco, that's the other storyline tonight. Michael was lifted after being hit by a pitch. X rays were negative. Precautionary X rays were negative. David Peralta, five RBIs tonight for the Diamondbacks, a grand slam and an RBI single. So this series, the D backs have outscored the Phillies 26 to 4. They've also out homered them 6 to 1. So we go to the top of the seventh inning. Jared Salta Lamacchia moves from out behind home plate to play first base. And Oscar Hernandez, the Rule 5 pick out of the Rays organization, will take over behind the plate. He gives a little nod to Freddie Galvis, two guys that have known each other for a long time from Venezuela. In fact, there was a point when Freddie's dad was going to be a, a sports agent. And one of the first clients that he signed was Oscar Hernandez. Oscar's no longer represented by Freddie's dad because a year later, Freddie's dad decided, I don't want to be a sports agent anymore. The ball's hit out to center field. AJ Pollock is there. It's a one out. Cameron Rupp is coming up. Up is one for two. 
By the way, it looks like Justin DeFreitas is available tonight after Pete McCannon said today that he wouldn't be because he's warming in the bullpen. There he is. And Adam Lowen is in the on deck circle, so he will get a chance to swing the bat. There's Adam. That might be a situation there. Justin DeFreda said, you know, you know what? I'm good to go. I'll bite the bullet. Maybe there's a couple things I want to work on. He did say that today. He and I were talking about it that he does. There are some things he's trying to figure out because he obviously is not uh, hitting things on all strides. One ball, one strike to Rupp. One and two. That was a hanger. Yes, it was. Two and two. Elkson at 85 pitches with one out here in the seventh inning. And pretty economical for the Diamondbacks. Sure. He's kind of forgotten. The forgotten man. Well, I think he's done what you had talked about earlier as far as. Uh, pitching his game. I mean, nothing's changed. His combinations are basically the same combinations that statistically he had coming in. I know the objective for a pitcher is always to get outs the fastest way you can get them. But in games like this, it just seems like the opposing team might get a little bit more aggressive swinging early, thinking, oh, I'm just going to lay one in here. You know, use that to your advantage. But I would have to think, Tom, that it's hard to keep up that aggressiveness and that, you know, zero zero mentality. It's got to be. Check swing and Rupp did not go, according to Jim Wolf. Three and two. Well, it was close. It was close. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming. Back toward the middle of base hit for Cameron. So he picks up his second hit of the night. And Lowen will step to the plate. Tomorrow night after the Phillies day game Derek Gunn and Ruben Frank will discuss all the key storylines from Eagles training camp plus hear from DeMarco Murray quick slants tomorrow night at seven presented by Nissan only on Comcast Sportsnet. First spring, uh, first preseason game is this weekend between the Eagles and the Colts hard to believe. One to Lowen. Breaking ball. One and one. Adam Lowen, when he made his return to the big leagues as a, as a hitter, he played in a, just a handful of games for the Toronto Blue Jays. Those are his career numbers 176 with a home run and four RBIs. Broken back ground ball to second base. That might be two. And it is two. Four, six, three, double play. And the side is retired. So Hellickson allows the single, but then erases it. Time to stretch here at Arizona. Phillies trail it by 12.
13 Phillies won every time the Phillies pitchers retire the opposition one two three Comcast make a contribution to Phillies charities Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies Justin DeFreitas is on Jake Lamb is the batter and Lamb hits it out toward left field on the first pitch Darren Ruff will put it away went away. Numbers for DeFreitas 0 and 1 of 5.69 ERA. Well, if you're just joining us, and we're happy that you turned it on, Phillies allowed 11 runs in the second inning. David Buchanan charged with those 11 runs. He's the first Phillies pitcher to allow 11 runs in one inning since Hal Kelleher did it back in 1938. Hal allowed 12. Is it cold that day, Tom? Uh, it was May in Chicago. I don't know. Could have been. Oscar Hernandez takes inside one ball one strike. Hernandez. Selected in the rule five draft uh, by the Diamondbacks from Tampa Bay last year. Average only 136. 22 at bats he has struck out. 13 times in those 22 at bats. Over to the right side, Howard is there. Defrayed is covering. Yeah, there are two outs. Phillies will take on the San Diego Padres, the 28th, 29th, and the 30th. On the 28th, it's the Goya Latino Family Latino. Celebration. Enjoy the foods, music, and dancing of this annual event. Take part in a special live auction inside the first base gate. Proceeds better benefiting Concilio in their efforts to provide social services to the Latin community. Go to Phillies.com for more information. Uh oh, Ben. What's that? My phone just went off. An alarm went off. There is another dust storm forming in the area. What did we learn today when the first dust storm came through? That this is late in the summer for a dust storm. And then it's usually followed by rain? By usually followed by rain about 45 minutes later. I didn't know that. Collins popped up. Andres Blanco in foul territory. He makes the catch. Side is retired in order. We've given you as much information as we know about dust storms. We'll go to the eighth. For great offers on our most exciting lineup ever, shopnissan.com. 
and buy Yellowwood brand pressure treated pod. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. Well, the Phillies trail at 13 to 1. They've given up 13 runs in back to back games to the Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, time now for our Hyundai defensive play of the game. We go back to the top of the second. At this point, the Phillies thought, huh, we might be able to get another run. Yeah, it's 1 nothing at this point. Cameron Rupp with a check swing, first pitch swinging. Darren Ruff gets caught in a pickle. Does allow Cameron Rupp to get to second base. But that is your Hyundai defensive play of the game presented by your local Hyundai dealers. So here is Chase Utley, who is one for three tonight. Takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Chase, uh, according to Pete McCannon, will be off tomorrow. And a liner out toward left center field. Another base hit for Chase. Pollock cuts it off, and Chase will stop it first. Well, I think he's uh, letting everybody know that the ankle, the swing, everything is fine with Chase Utley. So nobody out. The Dubal Herrera is coming up. It's time for the Major League Notebook. Murph. All right. Thank you very much, Tom. Yes, brought to you by St. Joseph's University. And after 13 years, the Milwaukee Brewers are going to be in search of a new general manager. Doug Melvin has decided he is uh, stepping aside from that position. He's going to stay with the organization in an advisory role. He's still going to run their baseball lots for the time being. But they are currently in search of a new general manager. They had some good success under Melvin in his years. His 13 years. They made the postseason a few times. But uh, now looking for a new general manager in Milwaukee and well the start of Cole Hamill's Texas Rangers career wow what a oh, great catch man. down there but in foul territory I'll let the crowd cheer for that for a second all right let's get back to Cole Hamill's Cole Hamill's start to his Texas Rangers career has been uh, a little rocky and now he is being scratched from his next start was supposed to start on Thursday in their next game but uh, felt a little tightness in the groin area in his last start where he coughed up a lead uh, late in that game so they have decided they are not going to allow him to pitch on Thursday they don't expect him to go on the disabled list but uh, but they are going to be keep a watchful eye on him Cole said that he's not too concerned about it he just wants to make sure that it heals up uh, so that he could be ready for the team uh, come for a September run. But uh, Cole Hamill's uh, not going to pitch on Thursday for the Rangers. Guys? All right, Murph. Nice catch, that. by the way, wasn't it? Excellent yeah. catch by Jake Lamb. Andres Blanco takes a strike. And for Odubel Herrera, this may be the end of his 13 game hitting streak. Get over there, over your shoulder, know where the warning track is, where the wall is, and ultimately where the ball's going to land. Great play. That's part of it too is getting over there. I mean he had to cover a lot of ground to get a long there. way to go. Gets there and a lot of the players do slide to protect themselves from maybe going into the stands a or B running hard into that wall and hurting their legs. Not being held on by Salt to Lamacchia over at first. The balls and two strikes to Blanco. Swing and a miss. And Andre strikes out. Two does away. Have a good curveball, doesn't he? He does. Well, that's the part of it that we've uh, talked about him not deviating from his game plan. I mean, he's throwing everything. I mean, that is technically his out pitch. This is the longest outing of the year for Hellickson. You know, he's got a, a very good changeup too, but the old 12-6, straight up and down breaking pitch. Hitters, you don't see it anymore. You just don't see it. Most pitches are lateral now, with the slider and sinkers, and you don't see that one. Addison Reed in the bullpen. This will be the 100th pitch for Jeremy Hellickson. There goes Chase. Pitches outside. One ball, one strike.
Check swing by Howard, two and one. Well, this start by Hellickson will be countered tomorrow by Chase Anderson and Aaron Nola. There's Aaron. He's probably thinking 13 runs in the last two games. How am I going to neutralize that? All he has to do is pitch the way he's pitched. I mean, he's kept teams off balance in his first handful of starts. I think his last outing against the Padres was that learning experience mm -hmm. we talked about not having his best best stuff but still being able to get through that ball game through the the six innings. Bad thoughts out. Good thoughts. In. <laughs> Put the right sign down, catcher. Put the right sign down, catcher. And Howard fouls it. It remains two and two. Outside corner, according to the umpire Doug Eddings, and Howard is struck out. Side is retired here in the top of the eighth. No runs, one hit, and one man left. Hellickson threw eight. for Arizona they blew it open two straight nights they've scored 13 runs against the Phils here's Ender Enciarte he came on for the injured Yasmani Tomas earlier in the game and so far he's 0 for 2 Justin DeFreitas delivers a strike it's 0 and 1 David Buchanan started he went an inning in the third he allowed 11 earned runs then Hector Neris two and a third That one's grounded foul. And 
It'll be Enciarte, Salt to Lamakia. First two batters in this inning. That one is spun toward foul territory. Blanco is there. One out. Well, Jeremy Hellickson through eight innings tonight was pretty darn good. I mean, it helped that he had a 12 run lead for most of these eight innings. He did, but he got a lot of lefties to roll pitches over to the right side. And they had some good pitches to hit early on. But a lot of lefties just getting out and hooking pitches. Very good breaking ball tonight. Very sharp. Got a little bit more gas when he needed it. Got a pitch there by Doug Eddings, but overall, very, very good breaking ball change up, good fastball location. Here's Salt to Lamakia, and he takes outside, one ball, no strikes. Eight innings, seven hits, one earn, unearned run. I guarantee the stuff that he had tonight going into the last two starts 0 and 2 with 11.25. Duble makes a running catch in center field. There's no way he had the stuff he had tonight to pitch like he did in the last two starts. There's no way. So Second obviously he made an, an adjustment. Yeah. Well, it's all about that. I mean, he's a veteran guy. Aaron Hill's the batter. Hill is two for four tonight. Swings at the first pitch. There's another extra base hit. It'll go down to the corner, and Hill will go to second base. A little bit of trouble for Darren Ruff, but Hill still stops at second. So 13 runs now on 15 hits for the D-backs. Shortstop Chris Owens. Well, so the Phillies are going to get through this game uh, by using just four pitchers. So the last time the Phillies gave up back to back games of 13 runs or more was back in July of 1993. They lost 13 to 2 and 15 to 8 to the San Francisco Giants. Fly ball shallow right field. And Jeff Francoeur makes the catch. That'll do it for the bottom of the eighth inning for the Diamondbacks. Three more outs to go for Arizona to try to finish off the first two games convincingly in this series. Inning, they lead the Phils 13 to 1. Well, our W Mason delivery of the game. This is the biggest blow in what was a huge inning for the Diamondbacks. Peralta gets a, I guess it was supposed to be a sinker down and away, ends up being a, a flat sinker up and away. Peralta drives it out to left field for a grand slam, the second of his career, and that is your WB Mason delivery of the game. And now Addison Reed will take over here in the top of the ninth inning for Hellickson, who goes eight innings, allows seven hits and one unearned run.
to Frank Core. Frank Core is one for three. Doubled back in the fourth. Fielder's choice and a fly out to center. That's it for him. Fastball at the knees, one and one. Sharply to short, but he does it everything hard. He does. One out. Darren Ruff's coming up. Well, Ricky Bow is uh, standing by to give his analysis of tonight's ball game. Only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. They may zero in on just one inning tonight. There's a pretty good chance that second inning. That may be the topic of conversation for the entire show. I think it's past you, Tom. <laughs> Just in case they weren't discussing that in the production meeting. Oh and one to rough. Oh and two. Pitch looks like it's coming in at more than 92 miles an hour off the uh, fingertips of Madison Reed. Sure does. It was jumping up in the zone too. Ruff is one for three tonight. And he fouls it. It remains 0 and 2. Madison Reed used to be their closer. No longer has that role. Ball and Ruff is down looking. So two outs, and here comes Freddie Galvis. Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Dodgers are shutting out the Nats 5 0. Puig has all five RBIs for the Dodgers. Zach Greinke is pitching in that one for LA. So that means that if that score holds up, the Mets will gain another game on Washington. Galvis rips it into right field. That'll be in for a base hit. And Ciarte tries to track it down and does. And that will hold Freddie to a single. Nice play. Two out base hit. And here's Cameron. Catcher Cameron. Rodgers. Radisson Reed appreciates that, knowing that now it's going to take an extra base hit to score Freddie Galvis, whereas if Freddie were on second, single up the middle. Hey, that's an earned run for Addison Reed. Side one and zero. Oh. Cameron today is two for three. Fielder's choice is first time up. Couple singles. Well, the good news about baseball, we say this all the time. The next one is pretty quick. It's tomorrow afternoon, just after noon. Here in the West, and you got a chance to keep this road trip going and win tomorrow. It's a four and two road trip thus far, going into the Brewers series. And you kind of have to look at it that way. That you can just erase everything. Uh, race tonight's ball game, win tomorrow, and set things up for a good weekend in Milwaukee. Fly ball down the right field line. If it stays in, it should do it. Enciarte leans in and makes the catch, and the ball game is over. Back to back nights of 13 runs for Chip Hale's squad as they easily defeat the Phillies in game two of this three game series. Well, it was a group effort. We can't just give it to one guy. The Diamondbacks offense. 13 runs, 15 hits, 7 for 15 with runners in scoring position. They hit three more home runs tonight, and they made a winner out of Jer Jeremy Hellickson, who pitched uh, eight innings, allowed seven hits, and one unearned run. So the D backs win it tonight, just as they won it last.